For almost a decade on my TV show, Interview with Ed, I've been interviewing extra-dimensional beings and consciousnesses from a number of different realms. Many of my questions have been answered, but with every answer comes more questions. Join me on my ongoing quest to find out who are we, why are we here, and where are we going? Here we are again, another Sunday, and we have our special guest, Diet. So it's been, it's been a minute. How have you been? I've been good. I'm still pretty much in the exact same location that we filmed. Um, okay. A little bit has moved around. Like I've found myself at different points in Salt Lake that have helped me see things in a deeper way and in, in a different extra dimensional way, I guess you could say. But um, mm. yeah, it's been good. It's been, it's been weird, but really fun. And um, are you, you're still channeling, I assume? I'm still channeling. Um, I've stepped a lot away from extra dimensional entities. Um, I have found, and I don't want to, you know, rock any boats, but I found that it is it is becoming a little bit more difficult to distinguish what agenda is more of the positive alignment and one is getting pulled to something that isn't in an alternative agenda. So I've stepped away and just grounded myself to helping people along their journey personally and channeling what specifically comes through for them. Mm. And I found that's, a lot, a that, little bit that, more peace. With that's that. interesting that you brought that up because that was something I was going to actually go into today. Um, you know, because before in our interview, our, uh, we talked about sort of, you know, the Greys and Dracos and some of the what classically gets identified as, uh, you know, dark or negative oriented entities. And then at that time in the show, there was this, this idea of uh, there's no such thing as a bad entity or a negative, mm -hmm. positive and negative. And, and, and now there's this new, I, I feel there's this new um, uh, viewpoint, not necessarily, you know, saying good or bad, but really drawing a hard line of no, and you know, Grace taking me in the middle of the night, you know, that that's not a good thing, right? Where at that time there was a camp that was like all the Grays are evil, all the reptilians are evil. And we and you know, I think where we were at was like, no, no, there's everything has its purpose. We don't need to um demonize these things. There's good things about it and bad things and whatnot. And then now we're like, I don't know. This is at least for me and and what I'm seeing in the community around some of the shifts that are happening and some of uh, the, you know past guests and stuff on the show. Or we're, we're like, yeah, we let it happen, right? Or we, you know, because we didn't know any better. But you know, looking back at that stuff, that was really not cool. And there needs to be some sort of retribution or discussion, maybe directly with those entities or within our communities to 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 acknowledge that the uncoolness of some of that stuff that went on. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I totally get what you're saying. I feel mm. like um, when I do my channeling, and I know I'm channeling because everybody's soul and evolution is so different mm -hmm. that there is some hard lessons for people and they make sort of these agreements with darker entities for their own soul to evolve. Perhaps right. they've been through their own dark currents and they need to make these contracts for their own soul to evolve. But I think as we're learning more about, you know, like narcissism and all these other behaviors that are just mm. not good for the evolution of humanity, it's not good for the, you know, like it gets toxic over time, yep. then we want to break free from it. And so we notice these other behaviors in like darker aspects of people that may have had contracts with darker entities and they can choose to evolve. I've channeled darker entities that are like, we've been stuck in fourth dimension because we can't evolve We're we've gotten too dark and right. they're looking for us to break three from that but it's not they don't make it easy because they're so controlled mm. so yeah there's it, it is sort of like this there, aspect a, of i don't judge there's a lot of bad habits that uh, i feel some of those darker energies even though they know they uh they're trying to make a shift but they fall back into these um just habitual goofy things and they know it's bad and you're like hey you know it's like uh that old what's that that, that old uh story of the scorpion and the frog are Ooh. you familiar with that no do tell okay i use this a lot because this has been how i 
sort of discern certain people in my life. So uh, apparently the story goes, uh, I'm probably butchering it, but the story goes is there was a frog by the side of the river and the scorpion comes up and says, hey, I need to get across the river. Will you give me a ride? And then the frog says, uh, no, uh, you're a scorpion. You're going to sting me. The scorpion says, no, 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 no. I, I'll get, don't worry. I promise I'll, I won't sting you. Uh, just get me across the river. I need to get across. And then the frog rethinks like, I don't know. You know, you're a scorpion. That stinger thing. And then... Um, and then uh, uh, the scorpion begs one more time. Come on, please, please. I promise I won't sting you. You know, I, I, I need to get across. If I sting you, you you're going to die. We'll both die. You know, it's not, or I'm going to die too. So that's not, uh, th that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? And the frog thinks, and it's like, yeah, okay, okay. Get on my back. And then the frog is, you know, going across the river. And about halfway through, boom, gets uh, stung and starts to sink. And the scorpion is sinking as well. And this frog's like, what the hell? What did you do? Did you do that? <laughs> and, and then the scorpion says, I'm a scorpion. Ah. It's just the, by design. They have the stinger and they sting things, right? So um, that, uh, that, that, that's a very powerful story that I've always kind of uh, kept when dealing with uh, certain people who, uh, you know, who make promises that they're going to change. Uh, and this goes with the entities as well, right? Not just people. Um, so anyways, yeah, sorry. That's, yeah, fascinating uh, story. <laughs> I actually channeled a more demonic entity that's known as the Scorpion King. Mm. And yeah, he's from more of the me old Mesopotamian time, but... Uh, like the movie. So the movie actually had some truth to it, maybe. Yeah, I haven't rewatched oh. that movie since he came through, but I'm like, I want to go back and see what similarities. But basically... There's a lot of these darker entities that are used to betrayal and used to taking over other people's kingdoms and then rebuilding their empire. And it's just in their nature. They just that's right. what they do. And so like, yeah, like they, they, they want to build empires. They will betray and kind of destroy who they need to. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you have to be able to have discernment of what sort of these people are. Yeah, uh, actually, I rewatched all of season one, got some help from Haruko to do. Japanese subtitles. So I've been going back and watching every week before doing the interviews to watch the episodes with subtitles. My wife gets to watch them and she's like, wow, your show is so much, is so much fun. And I'm like, yes, finally she can understand it and, and get into it. But, uh, so, um, rewatching yesterday's episode with you in the channeling that came through, I took notes because this is one of the things that I, I missed earlier on. It came out really quick and it was, it, no wonder it just like it, it kind of went over my head at the time, but I've heard it in other um, cases, in other instances, but it has to do with this sort of hierarchical structure. And, and I, I don't remember the exact words, how you said it, but the beings that sort of have this hierarchical structure tend to look down at the other and they feel that if the so-called beings lower than them are uh, giving their power away, in a sense, are oblivious, that they feel that it's their right to, to take that power. I forget exactly the words that you said, but it just came out really quick. I'm like, oh my God, it's so profound. Um, and I guess if you're standing in your power and your sovereignty and you're not going to do that, they kind of just move on. They, they go to the, to the next, you know, whoever's willing to give up their power, they're going to just feed off of that and, and go, go after those people. And they have this weird justification that they deserve it or, you know, we, it's our right to take the power. And I just thought, wow, to try to get them the head of some of these higher beings that, you know, right. think that way. <laughs> I know. It, and people are like, how could you get so dark? But I think people have to remember, like, I was born in Salt Lake in right. a very dark current. Like, my parents have a lot of, um, what's the word, Machiavellian traits. No, uh, they get their very them. dark triad themselves. And so like, I mm -hmm. just understand the dark psyche and what you just mentioned, part of that would be like, if you were in the military ranks yeah. and you wouldn't be able to really go up to a high ranking officer as a lower ranking individual, because you haven't proved yourself. You haven't been through the battle, so to speak, in the way that they've trained. And so there's not a lot, there's a, there's not respect for that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I think that's sort of the distorted version of 
uh, there is a positive side to that. You know, there's a, um, the, you know, proving yourself or wanting to uh, do good for, you know, someone you respect. Uh, I think that's the healthy uh, version of, of that uh, militaristic uh, martial uh, way. And it gets distorted when this superior, uh, I'm better than you kind of thing, uh, looking down and then the, the guy feels weak and inferior and, and in reality, we should be, you know, trying to lift each other up and like, Hey, what, what can I do? If let's say if I'm in a so-called higher position than someone else, it's like, what can I do to uplift you, to bring you to my level instead of just like looking down and you right. know, that, that, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, these are all, um, energies and viewpoints and perspectives that until I started the show and doing this stuff, I didn't really look at in in a way, you don't look at how things can get distorted in society and military and, you know, churches and all of this stuff, right? It's uh, it, it can get dark, like with the authority. Really yeah. And, yeah. They get abusive. Totally, totally. totally. Um, so uh, just checking in, then if you're not in those, so, so are you still talking to people who passed in, in these kinds of entities or... It just depends what comes through for each individual right now. I, uh, I'm i not really sure. I'm in a weird like transition because I'm almost like, so I was channeling a lot of extra dimensionals. And then when COVID hit, I was like, something doesn't feel right, you know, with this mm -hmm. whole coronavirus thing. And so I went in to kind of psychically figure that out. And I got more yeah. of a darker current. Uh, I, I, I remember I was actually watching some of your uh, channelings on on the crown and Corona, right? And you were getting <laughs> yeah, it all got the... very back to the draconic yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. So like, all right, what are you guys doing here? And so well, I, it was super powerful. It was really good stuff. Yeah, uh, there was a lot I didn't put out publicly because um, it is so integrated with you know royal families and all these like we said draconic kind of darker empires and so i wanted to be careful but yeah a lot of that came through during the virus season and so i kind of went back into the darker current to figure things out and so now that i'm kind of coming out of it i'm like where do i go next do i i don't know a part of me just wants to be grounded and help people in the day-to-day -day stuff it's sure it's well one of the things that i notice is uh, you know i i go down some of those uh, darker conspiracy path and um and it's super it's super valuable as long as you can hold that perspective and not get caught up in the fear right because that that can suck you in down some spirals that really don't serve you or your community or you know your family or whoever you're around you just like oh my god you know i remember my early days with my conspiracy phase i'm like oh my god do you know you know 9 11 do you know <laughs> what they did and you know all this stuff and, and everyone's uh, like, ah. yeah, they're like, what are you talking about? Oh, you have no idea. Like how bad these things are. Agenda 21 and the, the, you know, this collapsing of the economy and the coronavirus. It's all part of the same crown thing. And I think depending on the person, this is where it gets, where I found it gets a little tricky is some people can handle it and it's fine and you can get that information and, uh, you know, compartmentalize, put it in a box. That's, these are nuggets. Okay. I'm going to act accordingly and I'm not going to get caught up in the, in the story and, and all that stuff. However, most of us, I think, uh, and I think maybe <laughs> you probably did the right choice. Most of us, um, when you put especially those who are, uh, you know, content creators are putting this information out to the world. I'm about to hit, you know, post on a, a, a video <laughs> post and I'm like, you're like, no. I don't yeah. know if this is going to be taken the way I want it to be taken. You know, I yeah. want to educate and I want to, I want people to grow from this information. However, my gut says, you know, 90% of the people are just going to read this and they'll either get caught up in the fear or they're going to knee jerk reaction and, and try to attack uh, mm -hmm. and, and create some sort of drama, you know, drama talk around that thing and i'm like okay that's not what i want i don't want drama talk i just want to disseminate and get the information out <laughs> uh, and empower people so during the, the the corona beginning stages there was you know obviously now we know uh i'm not sure how much of my audience uh knows but probably if they've been following my tweets and stuff we now know without a shadow of a doubt 
the, the whole thing was pretty much orchestrated and created by uh, some nefarious uh, folks, um, <clears throat> which a lot of positivity came from that. So, you know, uh, there's still this growth that happens. But, um, but yeah, at the beginning stages, you try to mention some of these things um, and, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and um, th that whole th craziness that was going on there and, 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 and a lot of the things uh, that are happening in the world right now that are just, you know, upside down world, right, with uh, the narratives and different things. And you try to point it out and you just, you know, the, yeah. the social media monsters come after you. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been challenging, right? So, so, so how much do I go out there and how much do I pull back and what is going to be, uh, trying to discern what is going to be, um, educational or, you know, empowering or, you know, what is not, those are the challenges. Yeah. I've, I've kind of thought about that a lot lately too. Like why do some people, why are they able to kind of digest it slowly and, and then handle it and maybe regurgitate it where others just like can't handle it, like you said, or they mm -hmm. go extreme. Right. And I kind of think my intuition says that there is this training that you can go through with balancing. And I think a lot of it is Bruce, what Bruce Lee teaches, right? Is just that balancing of what's going on. Yeah. Oh, I know you're a fan of him. So yeah. yeah. He's he was so into like the energy of his body. And when you feel yourself getting extreme, you know how to pull yourself back where some people don't know how to create that balance. And perhaps energetically. We can learn from from this debacle or whatever you want to call it, these crazy times. I always like to see the positives in it in how we're growing as a society from some, some of these nefarious acts. How are not only that, but how do we navigate and help people with with the information instead of you know screaming uh, at the top of our lungs and 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 then and then getting uh, burned at the stake for us? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know, in, in in a digital way, you know, digital burning at the stake, which I had my fair share of over the corona sure uh, yep. um you know yeah it's crazy um even prior to corona just some some articles and things uh you know just for you know, and this is everybody but people who speak their truth are getting burned at the stake or, or roasted you know even we have these modern day terms you know on social media that canceled reflect or whatever canceled the cancel culture at my share of that um uh just because i'm not aligning with a specific uh, narrative. So um, it's been a learning curve and to, to not buckle and not give in to social pressures and, and different ideas, but also not to overly, um, you know, that's part of the balancing act is it's not, you know, F you world, I'm going to, you know, just do my own thing, which is, is nice sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> right. right. You have to do that to, uh, to keep your sanity sometime, but, um, but there's also, we're still navigating in the world and, uh, and how do we, uh, uh, flow with, you know, the screaming and the, the name calling and the, um, uh, the finger pointing. And then how do we stand in our truths and not, um, not succumb to the, the knee jerk reaction to, to, to clash. Right. That's, that's yeah. been a big, big part of what's going on and people screaming at you for not conforming to certain ideas, but then, okay, well, how do I, I don't want to scream back because that would not be the, uh, that would just be creating that polarity, but how do I stay in my truth, but still try to get the, the point across? It's been challenging. Yeah. I've noticed. Uh, so a couple of things with that, that I've learned hey. is like, real truth is like pure divinity, right? Like it seems like the more truthful things are, the more like trusting people can be with each other, the more like divine life can be. Cause it's like, there's no lies, there's no deception, there's no manipulation. Mm -hmm. But then there's also that factor. Okay. Well, if, if everything's in light, then how far does, like, how far does the polarity go in darkness? Does it just go darker? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I, I'm just tossing that in my mind. I, I've been considered, I've been thinking about the same things. Bashar and some of the others say, it's not that the world is getting darker. It's just that our awareness is, is expanding. So we're seeing 
the, the polarity spectrum. And then I have to, I'm questioning this evolution. I'm like, is it just going to get even worse from here? Are we going to get lighter and darker right. as we go? Um, something tells me that's not exactly the case. I feel that there is some sort of a pressure release and calibration that we do find ourselves in eventually. But uh, maybe it's just this time that we're going through that we, you know, we're really you know, how dark does it get? Right. <laughs> and, and, and then obviously how light too, but right. And, and, we, and, and these polarities are helping us see the world through different lenses. And, and, and I feel that's the, the positive side. Maybe that's the balancing is just acknowledgement of, of the, the spectrum that we have on this, right. in this reality. Um, because yeah, a big thing that's been coming to, uh, the human collective of late is all the human trafficking stuff, right? And sacrifice and all that stuff, right? That's been mm -hmm. uh, something that I kind of avoid on the show because it's, um, I think a lot of people are looking to to come to the show to get the good vibes, right? They don't want to. Yeah, and that's dark. That's so a very dark. That's a very dark reality. And um, I've been down those rest. <laughs> You're I've like, been... I want to get out of it. Yeah. It, well, I mean, yes, there, I mean, you, as long as what I do is when I go down those rabbit holes, I'm looking for the lessons and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes I'm looking so hard for the lessons. I, I, um, it's right there in my face and I'm like, okay, the lesson is, you know, you don't need to look down these rabbit holes. Right? <laughs> you, you don't need to go that far. You don't need to go that far. You've already got all the lessons you need. Uh, but, but, um, it, there is, and yeah, it's especially some of that darker stuff. It's like, ah, what, why, you know, why is this stuff even happen? Why is it showing up in my reality? Uh, does this mean that I have a dark place in my mm -hmm. inner being that needs to be looked at? Um, which is, you know, usually the case. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of, uh, a, a lot of that self reflection, a lot of that bigger reflection the darker reflection a lot of that trying to um figure out which story to align with right and, and i always go back to you know again quoting bashar um all truths are true and sort of accepting all of the truths as realities for certain people they don't necessarily have to be my reality but um but what if, what if I make it all my reality, right? What if I, mm. uh, where's that going to take me and, uh, and, and how am I going to navigate through that? Um, and what that's done for me is, um, to truly really try to understand everybody's perspective and even, even some of the people who go in the dark, stuff, go into the fear you know, uh, some of the denial people to go into these areas and try to adopt that viewpoint and then see how, get the lessons. Right. And, uh, I don't know if that's making I like sense. That. Yeah. No, I kind of like, I thought a lot about this and it reminds me of you, like even Los Angeles to me is such an interesting place. It's like mm. the weirdest portal. It, it's so like, you can either really get polarized. Like I see so many awesome, like hippie type of people in Los Angeles that are just like, like I kind of see Keanu Reeves like that, like just very yeah, yeah. balanced and peaceful. And then you just see dark, like it can get dark there. And it's just so fascinating. Yeah. And I, I saw a lot of that with COVID kind of hitting. It finally separated out a lot of the people that were like not sure if they were dark or light. And so it kind of really started creating more divide. I don't know. Is, is that how you kind of see Los Angeles? Yeah, I gave up on Los Angeles. I am in Big Bear, which is about two and a half, three hours from Los Angeles. A nice escape from the mountain, which originally I got this place just as a weekend escape and uh, went in with some friends. And then in 2016, I kind of moved here full time. I'm like, yeah, I can live here and just go down the mountain when I need to go into the, uh, the jungle, concrete jungle slash, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, frequency yeah. energy soup. Um so yeah, now, uh, I see it exactly like that. I see it. it's, it's a very, uh, I can feel it now when I go down the hill, mm -hmm. there's a certain elevation you hit that has that the frequency just goes cool. And it's funny because on one side of the mountain, I feel it on the other side, I don't feel it. 
So oh, it's like weird. going going towards uh, Los Angeles. There's this layer of um, energy, an energy layer that you literally. Uh, and I talked to other people who live up here in the mountains. They're like, "Yeah, we all feel it." Um, and it's this. You literally go into this thick density, and then once you're in there, then you know you calibrate to it, and you for, you quickly uh, adjust. But it's a very different world. <laughs> right. And because of that, yeah, I notice just as I drive through it, I'm looking in my rearview mirror. I'm like, I'm more, I'm a hyper alert. My fight or flight senses are, are kicking mm. in and I'm, I'm just like, okay. Uh, it's a different awareness of where you're at in space time uh, when you're there. And then, right. and then, like I said, you calibrate and you, some of those things fall to the wayside, but it just noticing that, uh, um, there is there is a definite energy shift in places in the cities like Los Angeles, and I'm sure in other cities. Um, you know, I lived in Tokyo for a while, and and that's a it's a much different energy, you know, because of mm -hmm. the, the the people. And um, but there's a lot of dark stuff that happens in these cities. And what's what's so weird about it is is and, and perhaps this is because of the energy, but there it, it's so. Um, it's so in your face, like it's right there, but yet mm -hmm. nobody can see it. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And and that's really extreme in the cities. When you come out of the countryside, you know, people are doing their thing and it's not really so um, in your face. But what I've noticed, you know, like the old, uh, you were seeing a lot of these memes from the, uh, was it They Live or I forgot the movie, where the guy where he puts on Roddy Rod Piper, put on the sun, the glasses. And oh, is it? Are you talking about an old? Is it from the eighties? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the eighties movie, right? Where, uh, where he's, you know, all the signs of propaganda, and like he has the glasses yeah. that he can see the baddie. I know what you're talking it's, about. I don't, I don't remember the title, it, but I feel like it was they lived. Let me see what he, somebody can write in the like chat. Like once he puts on the glasses, he can see everything for what it is. Like even yeah, yeah, the yeah. people turn into like beasts or something. Like monsters. yeah, yeah. There's like there's like uh, evil reptilians. Um, <laughs> And you could see their faces, right? Yeah. Uh, so I feel that's kind of what happens in, in LA now when I go down there is you can just see everything for what it is, like all the yeah. advertisements. And, and a lot, I think a lot of people are, are seeing this now too. So um, it's uh, it's crazy how in your face. And then, I, and then I think back, I'm like, has it always been like this? And am I just <laughs> now realizing that I think that's the case? I think it was, yeah. I think it was. Aware. Yeah, we're all. That's how I feel about when I go to Vegas, because when we go to Vegas, it was like we would go there college weekends just for fun. And it was right, like right, so right. much fun. And now when I go back, it just feels like that feeling of darkness. And I'm like, was it always right. this dark or <laughs> did I just not notice when I was younger? And it, it always was. It might have even gotten darker now, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the other thing that um, I think we're, you know, we're, we're uh, the part of this recalibration period, right? Is is how dark does it have to get for people to snap out of the uh, mm. the, the matrix, so to say? And and there's still a lot of things that I, I feel, you know, at least for me, from the very beginning, were obvious, but now more and more people are like, oh yeah, that's they they are acknowledging the sort of you know, dark agendas, so to say, and they're making choices to unplug from some of those things. And, uh, and then I, I always think about, well, how is that going to show up in our reality? Are these, uh, you know, the idea of, you know, where we, where we go, when we go all, we, we're all going to, we're all in this together. Nobody's going to get left behind. So what happens, how does it show up in our reality? Does the these nefarious, you know, the Facebooks of the world, do they adopt, um, which is kind of happening, you know, web 3.0 or the, which is a decentralized web where everybody sort of has their own sovereignty and there's no censorship. Uh, do they adopt that reality or do they just go full totalitarian, which they've tried to with the metaverse and other things and, um, you know, full control, full takeover. And, and then that doesn't work and people wake up and they're like, okay, Facebook, you're done, but they're not, they're still there. So are they going to just make the shifts? And what I'm seeing is yes, they are adopting 
you know, Ethereum based uh, protocols and moving into Web 3.0 as opposed to, you know, they're doing their own servers of uh, total um, control. So it's, it's, it's weird. I'm like always thinking, are they going to just disappear? Are these nefarious entities are going to just poof off the planet or, you know, or do themselves in through people just sort of calling them out and saying that that can't have that anymore? Or do they adjust? And it's kind of a little bit of both, but more I'm seeing a an adjustment phase where mm, so you see adjustment <laughs> yeah. yeah it's interesting because i've tried to channel this so many times and it's it really truly feels like timelines are shifting so much that it's really hard to lock in like yes we're going on this timeline and this is right. what's going to happen and it always comes back to the collective like how much like you said is the collective willing to bend on boundaries if they're not wanting to do something then that's a firm no yep. if there are if they keep to that, I think we would be more in a positive timeline. But if they're kind of manipulated easily or bended, then or not strong willed enough, then the nefarious entities find those weaknesses and can poke at it. And then I've also learned too that is a hard, it's been a hard pill to swallow for some is that some of these fourth dimensional entities or nefarious entities truly do want to evolve. And so they're trying to look to us as more light beings like, Okay, well, tell us what is not okay. What what is what is not going to be okay, so that we can also get off this planet because they get kind of bound and stuck to their empires in a way, and so it really real it really relies like from the bottom up, right? Like the lowest and then up higher. If, however, they cannot let themselves be controlled. The better timeline I think we get on. Yep, and us as individuals, how do we how do we fit into all this? How do we realize it? And then, okay, what can I do best in my small community to help empower, obviously, the individuals? And I, ultimately, I think that's kind of what it comes down to is just empowering the individual so that they can then shine their light and take their light into their communities and uh, groups and, and not fall into the agendas, at least for now, until unless somebody else has a different idea or a better plan. <laughs> oh, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that, it it mean, is hard yeah. though, especially because like I've come across so many dark, more nefarious people just to show me sort of what we're up against. Mm -hmm. And some of them genuinely, like when you call them out, they're like, oh, like they don't get it, right? right. Like they're just like, yeah. oh, I didn't even know. And then right. you like kind of explain it. And like you said, like for a moment they want or they may desire like, oh, I don't want to do that. But their pattern of behavior is like the scorpion. They're just going to yeah, keep yeah. going toward that direction. Um, but it's funny to call them out and then to have them just be like, not aware, not understand like the effect that they have on people, like the negative effect that it's having. Exactly. This is a, a fascinating conversation. I want to sort of open it up to to do some channeling later i know if you're you know we can go with the flow to see who yeah, wants to we come can try in. and see what see what comes through but um but on this conversation if anybody wants to chime in um glenn has his hand up oh and mark okay let's uh, let's go let's see i think in the queue glenn is first so let's go with glenn hello diet how are you hi good how are you glenn I'm good. So D Diet and I both share uh, a, a. We were both raised Mormon, and so I I'm curious. You you'll know what I mean by this question, Diet. You might need to help other people understand it. When when you were raised Mormon, you were taught the plan of salvation, and now you probably have a different concept of what that plan of salvation type of thing might be could you explain what that is i'd love to hear you talk about that so what uh like my interpretation of what salvation would be as of now well so so like the mormon plan of salvation where there was this pre-existence where we didn't have bodies and then we come to earth to have bodies and it's all to become like god and to go on and have eternal progression and you know like there's so many common themes that i've seen as i've been in this channeling world and, and listening to stories that 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 people tell I'm curious how your your view of that has shifted from being raised Mormon with this idea of a plan of salvation to kind of where you are now with like soul journeys, eternal progression, uh, that that kind of an idea. Yeah. Okay. I like that question. So it's so fascinating because with Mormon history and Mormon culture, like there's so many beautiful like underlying truths that go back into sacred old programs of 
mystery schools and initiations and just the rites of just pure sacredness. Um, so with this idea of eternal life and coming down as a body, that does go back to like the original fall of mankind separating itself out from the source, as we know, and finding a duality, either masculine or feminine. But what so the alternative, the Mormon side is, but you have to do all these things so that they can lock you into their kingdom, their program and their empire. Uh, but the plan of salvation, what I've learned for it to mean is actually you save yourself by potentially getting locked into a kingdom at first and realizing that the kingdom is either corrupt or it's not working for your evolution. And you go through a death. You, you save yourself by dying to that program, dying to what was and reliving a new life in this body that you still have. So you don't. So the idea is like, OK, after we die, we integrate all these lessons that we've learned through all these loved ones and maybe our marriages. And we kind of get the perspective as a source after we die. But to go through that, we don't necessarily have to die we can live in that conscious experience in a body. And so what the Mormon church did was block that, right? They're like, no, tell death, tell it's forever. You die in this position. Um, but then the real salvation of it is no, you can die to that and then relive in, a, in the same body with a different perspective um, in that type of thing. And that's why, so when you think of salvation, you also kind of think of the savior in a way. and he died at 33, and there's the 33 vertebrae along your spine. So that's going from your kingdom, like where you where your earthly experience is, and finding your true divinity, your truth up until your pineal, and basically shedding all of the falsities and finding your truth. Excellent. So, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Super. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you want to jump in? Sure. So <clears throat> I used to be, I was raised Christian and I was, wasn't totally anti-Christian, but there was a lot of it that I had issues with, you know, and I was like, for the most part, I was like, okay, this just doesn't work for me. And, and it wasn't until later, you know, in maturing my spirituality and getting, working with, I worked with a, a Zen teacher who, he had a PhD in Buddhism and he was a previous Jesuit priest. And so very spiritually mature, and he was able to help me understand a lot of stuff. And I'd realized that there's all kinds of beautiful stuff and definitely divine messaging in all the religions, you know, and the founding of them. Um, but then the messages are for different people at different times, different cultures, and they, they don't get, and they get misinterpreted and or abused, you know, and like some things that were meant to be taken literally get shifted to metaphorically, things that were metaphorical, get shifted to literal, all kinds of things like that. But anyway, one of the things that I was wondering about, and I, I don't know if it was Mormon, but I, I think it was a, a friend of mine that was Mormon that told me about this, that, that part of their salvation, which, and I thought at the time, and this was, this is a number of years ago before, before I, before I got into Ruben's weird world, um, <laughs> that they were saying that they were that uh, alien spaceships were going to come and rescue them off of the planet, off of planet Earth, that that was their salvation. And so and back then I was like, well, that's kind of crazy. Um, but then coming into Ruben's world, it's like, oh, well, that's kind of normal. Um, maybe there is a group of people that, you know, like, you know, that are a bunch of star children and, you know, when they're uh, they're ancestors are going to come or not ancestors, but there are other people who are going to come and they're going to be reunited and, and go on to a, uh, go on to a spaceship. So was that a, is that a Mormon thing? And I'm, I'm curious, you know, if, if it is, you know, how you think about that. So as a Mormon, we wouldn't have talked about any spaceships, if that's what you mean. Like it would have never been a thing to have, uh, rescuing from spaceships but what's interesting and what kind of correlates in my opinion is we talk we talked a lot about how once you reach a certain level of divinity and awareness you are able to be your creator which is essentially what we talk about more now in this conscious awareness of our environment of you create your own world right like you can create your own reality you can potentially create your own little kingdom 
And so what I anticipate is this correlation is different points in humanity. We got to such an evolved place that some of us were able to go off planet and make our own creation, our own planet, our own species, or be a part of that somehow by using our intelligences. And to them, we might have appeared as gods or as higher intelligence beings. So it wouldn't be weird for me to think that those other places of existence could visit and could help and could translate different DNA and energetics and information for us to continue to build as creator gods. Um, so I don't know if that's what you mean, but it definitely, like, as far as the Mormon culture, like, to say something like a uh, ET race coming down in a spaceship, like, you would never, you would never mention that. That would never have been a thing. Hopefully that answers what you were thinking, you know, in alignment it was definitely right. a big part of Joseph Smith's uh, theory, though, was like once you reach a certain level of enlightenment, you could create your world. You create, And that could be literal in this world, or you could create another reality of, of your own species, potentially. Yeah, and that, that stuff sounds consistent with the stuff now. I mean, that, that, you know, from what I'm hearing now is that, you know, that's the main aspect of us moving into 5D is us remembering we're gods and and living like it yeah I, i'd love to jump in and piggyback on on that a little bit what i found is uh and the idea around the hybrid children has been really uh sort of the one of the key catalysts for this so in the beginning you know i uh, as a ufologist i'm studying ufo stuff i'm talking to abductees uh, that was sort of my gateway into this world and um the, the whole thing was super fascinating for me talking to government officials and trying to figure out the whole et thing and then um this idea of hybrid children and then people you know having their experiences on ships and stuff which is a valid expression or a valid experience for these people and uh and then i thought i'm starting to think wait so the hybrid children are going to come down and that's going to be this thing and and we're going to you know, they're going to show up in our backyards and we're going to have to take them in and, um, you know, and all that. You hear all those stories, right? And and that may actually still happen for some people, but I've sort of, how do I say, I've sort of um, uh, uh, relaxed my, uh, not just expectations, but my idea of how these things are going to manifest themselves in our reality. Um and for some people, they might just be exactly that. But for the collective who don't even believe in ETs, you know, not everybody, some do. Uh, I feel it's 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 these energies. What I've realized is not to take everything so literal, you know, through uh, these ideas of you know space aliens and you know hybrid children and uh, uh, all of it. Right? It's this 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 Rubens world. Right? It's it's a can of worms that I've opened up to. Uh, to explore and for my own sanity. And I suggest this for everybody. Um, don't take it so literal, like all of it. Like it's, these are nuggets. These are stories. I think that help us navigate the times, but these are energy vibrational frequencies that manifest them way in stories that we can, uh, learn and, um, use or, uh, or abuse. And I think, uh, many of, so-called nefarious uh, uh, um, groups, religious groups, you know, the ones who choose to use religion in a nefarious way, um, take these stories and they run with them and then they interject them into the collective and then they hook you in, right? So uh, having a, 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 a not so fixated idea of the story and just trying to read the energy and then see how it, manif how it manifests in, in your reality can really help um, keep your sanity. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I, I did step away from any type of uh, information that is like a savior, you know, other entities coming in to save you, because yeah. I noticed that a lot of humans weren't living their lives and they were kind of waiting for this glorious day when these higher dimensional entities could help them. And it's uh, it's not part of how Earth is really designed. Earth is designed for you to kind of fall. It's a fallen state. We're in a very dense body. And the idea is, okay, how do I get back to truth, divinity, 
God, all these things, while still being in a very dense atmosphere and, and creating a world that feels divine. It's not really leaving the world. It's conquering what you, what you have, you know? Hmm. Charmaine, do you want to jump in there? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Dee. It's Hi. so great to uh, chat with you here. I, uh, uh, your video, the interview that Ruben had done with you was uh, definitely one of the, my favorite of this show. Thank you. Um, it really stuck with me. Yeah, there was something that just felt so true to what you were saying and um, something that uh, I've noticed in, uh, uh, in connecting with those who channel or listening to different channelings. And it's something that I noticed uh, maybe like my, the first time I, I ever saw a channel or for my own uh, to connect with like my guardian angels or something was um, that many channelers have a, most people, humans, right? We have the lens that the information is coming mm -hmm. through. And so yours just felt really clear for me. Um, I think for me, it's because I grew up in a very religious home too, where I had to learn discernment because uh, I was, I think I'd mentioned that I had to give my allowance to Tammy and Jim Baker when I was a kid. And so it, it just grew. Um, I'm, I'm like super skeptic about everything or discerning. And so I appreciate that clear lens and that could just be my projection or what, but that's what I felt from, from your interview. So thank you for that thank and the you. information you shared. Yeah. And I wanted to speak about what you guys were speaking about with the agenda and like the negativity out in the world and kind of getting hooked into that. And something that has really been coming up for me. Um, and in my past, I was, I would go to protests, like I was protesting globalization, anti-globalization efforts. And got really involved in that to a point where it began, began to feel unsafe. And at this point, I see all these things happening in the world. And there's a part of me that feels a responsibility to stand up for things. But then there's a huge part of me um, or more information I feel around me or an energy that when I participate in that, in that negativity, I'm becoming a part of the agenda. And I'm actually allowing the agenda to control me. And now my vibration's lower and I'm angry and I'm fighting. So it's just, I, I wanted to ask about that. What you thought about that kind of like middle place, like how, how do we uh, uh, fight for our sovereignty without fighting, right? Um, and I loved what you said too about, you know, holding space or believing that even fourth dimensional or nefarious beings also want to evolve. Um, that felt really true and one that's hard to hear, right? Or even be humans, right? Where you're like, I know you're trying. When you're like, I think you're just going down. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I just. Yeah, that's a really that good question. It. Good question. Um, it's interesting because like when you talk about the warrior spirit and fighting for something, it's actually a, a good vibration to be in, at least for a while when you feel powerless and you feel like your voice is not being heard. Like that's the next step, right? Like you're depressed and powerless. And now you're fighting and you're like, this is what I'm fighting for now. But then it's like, when is it too much? When, when is the next level of like, okay, I've, I've spoken my truth. Now I need to move to the next step. That is, that is a reality to look at. But I guess I just didn't want to disregard that fighting spirit because that's kind of what, what is needed. Um, but then the other thing is, is like, so how do you move on? It is interesting, too, that you said that you don't want to be part of the agenda, because as we look through history, like through different revolutions, the there's a trick that some uh, elites do and they kind of get the rallying up of the people. Right. Like to, to push evolution and to push change. They don't do it because they're there to control. That's what the elites and empires are built for. They don't create chaos. They control it but they will create and facilitate chaos if they know change is needed within the empire and it's becoming de-evolved or falling in on itself. Um, so it's sort of like observing the chaos and knowing what it is there for, but also what is my role in that? You know, like I understand that these things need to come out to be put out with anger or whatever it is. But also seeing, like, like you said, I don't want to be a part of the agenda of like, okay, this is where the chaos starts because it's trying to break free from these things. So I would just say to focus on where, where you are on that rung. Like, okay, I've stepped into the anger, come out of powerlessness. And now like, where, where's my next step of like evolution? Is that, so I feel like 
the next step a lot of times is when we want to feel empowered, it's through warrior spirit and anger. And then the other side is rewriting the story. It's sort of like creating our own story in a different way. So maybe through writing would help and rewriting what it is that you want. So, yeah, that's a buzz. Thank Good you. Stuff. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia, did you want to jump in? <clears throat> Yes, um, it's lovely to speak with you. I wanted to kind of piggyback almost off of what uh, she was just talking about, going back into these concepts we were talking about earlier with, you know, um, lower vibrational state versus higher vibrational states and how those will end up, you know, turning into the reality that we experience. Do those nefarious things like just kind of continue to like, how does that come together? And and then you also brought up the stuff about narratives and, and the things that narratives and our stories have to teach us. And that was so relevant to, to this is that for, for me, I, uh, funny little story. I'm literally named after Cindy Lou Who from the Grinch. My dad says he manifested this when he was 10 years old. He was going to have a Cindy Lou Who. Um, and I had, I had bleach blonde hair. I had a little curly cue. I was a straight up who. It was a thing. Um, but the reason that this was relevant is because I was asking myself these same kinds of questions like what what is this reality going to look like when when we're integrating these polarities, you know, as we're ascending and we're integrating these polarities, what does that look like? Because you understand that those energies still exist. So what do they look like for you now? And the reason that the Grinch is relevant is because, you know, there are no there are no coincidences. So I started looking at that story in my own life and thinking about the narrative of that and what happens in the Grinch. He comes and he tries to steal all of their happiness, all the things that they think that are going to make them happy on Christmas Day. And he goes up to the top of the mountain to, you know, destroy all their stuff. And what happens is they come outside and they they're full of love and they sing and they just continue to exist. And then the Grinch can't help it. He, he doesn't do anything. His heart just grows. It grows three times and it bursts and he, he ends up joining. And that's kind of the way that I think about it is like he still existed in his cave doing his thing, living in his grump land. But like eventually that that energy, you know, that we just bring by being ourselves. And I think that's another important part of that narrative is just giving people that space to to just be that self and recognizing that space. And that's what I I'm rambling at this point, but but this whole construct of the the darkness and and the light and integrating ha, has always rang so clear for me. And we started talking about dark right when we came in. And so if you could touch a little on your experience with like how the dark plays in a positive light in your life, because it has always kind of been one of those for me is I, I've always loved being able to take those moments and find where that magic was for me. Yeah, I love that. I know it's interesting. It's interesting that one individual could take so much from a community. And that's really where you get vampiric lore. So like the vampire and there's a there's a technology for this where like the dark arts and the dark magicians, they were able to transform their soul to literally pull in energy so they could take so much. And obviously over time that can be energy sucking and vampirism. It's very dark. And a lot of these entities actually look like little vampires. Like they've got these dark wings and they're there to basically pull in all your energy. But what I've learned is, and this is similar to the Grinch, if you don't have attachment and you don't have this egoic idea of what your life should be and all these things that you should have, they can't really take anything, right? Because the heart is yours. And so if they were integrated, the Grinch community, whatever that was, Whoville, I think it was, Yes. Like they're integrated with each other. And so like the stuff wasn't what the Grinch, he, they were, he was able to take it and they were like, doesn't matter, you know, but if they were attached to those items, then the Grinch would have won, right? Like the, the egoic state would have exactly. uh, destroyed. And that's what I've learned through these darker demonic entities is they strip you of ego so that like you, there's nothing you can take. Cause I still have like my soul, like I could be homeless and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but uh, that's the lesson from these darker entities is like, if you think that your self-importance relies on any material items, then we'll, we can take that and make you feel worthless, you know, but if not, then, then you win. So that's been, a, um, yeah, that's been sort of 
a theme in many um, documentaries. I think there's a documentary called What is Happiness or Happiness? Uh, and just in general, uh, a general realization for society in the past few years where they make comparisons. They go to the small village that that we would say people living in poverty, they have a dirt floor and they're still uh, making food and with, uh, you know, fire and they seem to be more happy and they have, you know, what, what society would say. They don't have anything. Why are they happy? Um, but yeah, it's just sort of a, it's an old story that uh, we're having to retell once again, the Grinch once again, <laughs> <laughs> because people still don't get it right there. But I guess it's, it, it is, it's showing itself in different ways. So uh, Vegan Das, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Diet. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I want to share, uh, if I may, uh, from uh, my perspective, what I have learned. Uh, sorry, um, I work uh, a lot of uh, energies and I teach others and I get a lot of astral travel, astral dreaming. And like uh, most of my lessons come also through that part. I most get the information in English, also, but my language is not uh, native English. So that's why I know what I'm channeling. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, these are the aspects that have crystallized over his uh, uh, being uh, time on earth. First one is love life. Like love to live and love life. Second one is respect soul. Third one is respect body. And there are two ones which were hidden from me. Like I, uh, I think I'm not prepared <laughs> or I should find them later in my life. And the last one was uh, follow God's mouth from the bottom of your heart. I love that. I like that. Look. Very good. Very yeah, good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I wanted to thanks, thanks, Vegan Us for sharing. That's uh, a good reminder. We should always come from the heart. And um that seems to be a, one of the main themes that comes through, I think most of the channel messages is uh, is to come through the heart. Um that that filter can uh, sort of clean clean up a lot of the the ego and uh, the mind side of things. Um, we're getting closer on time. I, I wanted to leave a little time in for for channeling it. Um, but then again, you know, I don't know if the Ryan Council wants to come through again or how are how do you feel? How how would you feel about say even tuning into perhaps one of the um, uh, you know, our members here, uh, that if any energies were popping out while we were having these conversations, I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure how to guide this, uh, the direction of things here. Yeah. Um, let me think, well, do you have a question, Ruben, or do you think I should just leave it open? I, I mean, I, I watching the episode again uh, yesterday, the, I had some more not super specific questions to the Orion Council per se, but probably things that they would be able to answer. Uh, but then again, I want to go where you're, you know, the, the more recent version of, of Diet and where she's at and bring that energy to, to the audience now. So, I know. think maybe what I'll do is just like call in that energy and ask if there's any message for us. And then if you have questions, you can prompt me or whatever based on that. Does okay. that seem like a good? Sure. Okay, sure, sure. Let me just And don't, don't force me... it. If, if that energy is not yeah. wanting to come if... through, I'm sure some of my questions, my questions are pretty general and could be uh, answered by, you know, anybody. Anybody. Okay, let me see if anything comes through. Okay, so I'm actually not getting really a good hold on Galactic. 
uh, Orion. I'm getting more of a Draco. Um, I would say darker entity. It feels a little bit more like an evolved entity that has integrated darkness, if that makes sense. The, maybe he's been an empire, built his kingdom, built the world, known darkness, and now is just trying to assist humanity evolve. Uh, he is coming through as a reptoid, very draconic, but not dark, just more wise and more um, overall knowing and observing what's going on. Um, let me see if he has a message. Okay. Okay, so, okay. Okay, so he's showing me that there are several variations of the species of the Draconic Empire. And there are subspecies. So he's showing me that, like, we have our own pyramid with various sort of social classes and various different type of people. They also have that. And in that structure, there are lower dimensional, or I wouldn't say dimension, uh, lower socioeconomic reptoids is what he's showing me. So mm. they're, they have their own rankings. He's showing that right now there are lower ranking reptoids that they gain a lot of power if they control the earth now. So he's showing me that basically um, th they were able to harness the earth's energy and to build various empires and, and grow spiritually. Um, and they're willing to move forward now. Um, but he's showing me that the lower status. So if you, so he's, okay, so he's showing me if you were to imagine Prince William, his children, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's just say Prince William is like, you know, I'm ready to evolve. I'm, I'm over this empire. I'm ready to build my own thing. But the children may gain a lot of power by controlling this empire that's already been built. That's what, that's what this entity is showing me is kind of going on behind the scenes. There's a, still a struggle to control the Earth's surface. And it may be kind of significant or maybe just something to be aware of that there are variations in various levels. Some of the higher ones are just over it and they're ready to evolve. They are assisting in evolution. And the other ones are a little bit more vicious and they're they're like ready to just dominate. Um, and just to, just to give you a visual perspective, the entity that's coming through looks very much like a dragon man in a way. He's, you know, very like, reptoidish and the ones that he's showing that are a little bit less evolved are like raptors they're just these little kind of like i'm ready i'm ready to do this so let me just see if there's any other information on that uh he says that um overall he senses that many of the entities on earth are ready to evolve out of what is attempted to be programmed into uh, he is showing me Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know if maybe he has some intuitive or telepathic connection with this and how this mm -hmm. is going to operate, but there is something with technology sort of being integrated in this new empire, but it's not the old, em it's not the old emperors, so to speak, that are doing this. It's these new sort of beings that are just wanting to grab into things. Um, mm -hmm. So he's saying that many of us are ready to evolve out of it. Um. Okay, let me just see if there's anything else because there were some things with. There's a lot of people that. Okay, so he's showing me that. Whatever happens, there's a program on Earth that's going to be established, and you can either basically evolve out of it, fifth dimension. You're on to the next. Um, kind of like congratulations to you, basically. And the other part is that those that want to be here are here you know like let let it happen let it let them stay here if they want let them be here and incarnate if they want yes they will get locked into their matrix um but he's just showing me that it can cycle in reincarnation again like it had been before so these entities or individuals that get locked into the new matrix they're just going to recycle back in and just allow it like just it is what it is um I don't know why that may be significant, but there's a surrender to the process potentially for everybody. Uh, don't try to force everybody to come with you, maybe, is also right. sort of that energy. Like, allow dimensions to fall into their place while focusing on where you are frequently at. Um, anything else? Okay, so 
he's showing me that on Earth's grid, when you look at the matrix, it does get locked in. Uh, maybe you could call it the evolved spirits, evolved people were able to energetically manipulate it and control it to a certain extent, possibly through the dark arts or white arts, ma magical intentions. Um, and that is all getting broken up. It's like it doesn't, those, those programs are really getting broken up. And he says that what happens is now it's going to cause chaos and people lose identity because they're like, wait, what's, what is happening right now? And they're getting flushed down into their subconscious. Um, and so he says that those of us that are aware of our subconscious and the collective subconscious, we can aid in, um, he says, orchestrating uh, what would make sense for them, like help them understand. So it's kind of like what you're saying, Ruben, of like, I don't know what's too much. Like, I don't want to just throw stuff at people, but there may be people that are ready to hear things and try to digest it and make sense if you feel that that's what's needed. Right. Um, because it doesn't seem like things are calming down. If anything, I feel like there's these little like shakeups on the surface of things to get like shaken up and people are just like, what's going on? What is happening? Um, and so he's just saying like where we're at, we can step in to help those individuals. And then if there's people that are just like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to go to my job. Those are probably people that may just not be ready. Sure. Um, but there is this feeling of chaos, you know, like chaos is getting kind of kicked up through time as we're transitioning into what frequency we want to be in. And with those portals being opened, you can have more darker entities incarnate and also higher frequencies incarnate. And he's showing me that, that it will be balanced. So you're not going to have more darker than lighter, but it doesn't, it doesn't limit to just have light frequencies coming in. Your sure. these portals are open to have dark frequencies come in and be like, yeah, this is going to be my earth now. This is happening. So something to think about. Uh, let me just see if yeah. you'll give me any hint on how to discern. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says that most of the entities that are older, you know, they've been through this and they're ready to evolve. They may be draconic. They may be darker. He says they are high adepts in spirituality and religion. Like they will know a lot about spiritual truths and religion. They can possibly use it to manipulate, but they also will know about it. Those that are more of the lower rung, he says they won't, they don't care. They want technology and they want to be able to use it to harness like DNA and consciousness. So they're not going to have a deeper insight into the psyche and like all of these Jungian kind of ideas is something he says to keep in mind. Hmm. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Um, he's not giving much else about discernment. He's just showing me like these portals are opening up for what you may call hybrid or different energy beings to incarnate it also opens up those energy portals for lower reptoids to incarnate and to harness earth's uh, frequency as well and so I, I that's all he's really giving me with that to be aware of uh could i can I ask a quick question yeah um so if this has always baffled me and, and i and i understand the the positions of these sort of elder dracos or reptilians and in that hierarchical structure, there still is this sort of teacher-student kind of thing. Why does the, the teacher, so to say, sounds like a teacher, why don't they ever school these, these underlings? Why don't they spank them and say, get in line and no doing that? And, or why, why, is there, uh, why is that allowed to, to continue? The, the, okay. the Hunter Bidens, right? Why, are they, why don't they get spanked? I'm sorry to pick on Hunter, but yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, well, okay. So there was a couple things. I'll get into what you're saying, but when you brought in, yeah. when you threw in Hunter Biden's, he says that's a different species. I don't know if they're a different no. uh, uh, energy, but he's making me feel like that's not quite. It's not his job to school under. <laughs> yeah. He's like, they're not really our kind. Like, they're they're more, I don't know different. what it they feel a little bit more like grays in a way. They're, they're very programmed in a different way. Um, let me see though what you're saying. He says that's not the way that we evolve. 
uh, that's not the way that we learn of ourselves. We learn of ourselves through conquering, through developing in um, like a solar sphere and a very like projected three-dimensional reality. And so we learn of ourselves through dominating the physical and mm -hmm. understanding the material. Um, he just says it's just the part of the way our soul evolves is we dominate and control. And if there's any chaos within that, then it's it's our soul that's not developed enough to be able to manage uh, the empire, so to speak, or, or um, people. Yeah. He says that, that we find it unevolutionary beneficial to live in total peace and harmony because it doesn't challenge the friction needed to expand in a cosmic way. Uh, this is our perception of growth and uh, collecting the source in our being. Well, I see. Okay. But doesn't, uh, being wise, doesn't someone of that, um, uh, you know, evolutionary process, don't they see the ultimate destruction of a society or an empire through, um, you know, those ways? Like if you know the, you know, it's not going to work. Why even try? I guess there's lessons in between the the start and the finish line, but it just seems like it leads to nowhere. Why? Why even go there? Uh, he says we are not we are no strangers to destruction. Uh, so when you say so, he's bringing me back to that idea of when you say like disciplining or maybe even like hey, right? He says that if if it does get too con destructive, that's when it is controlled. Like they kind of are gatekeepers in a way where they're like, hey, you haven't learned this. You cannot just jump from prince to king. Like you've got to learn these things. But if you want to right. be king, then you're going to have to push for it and try for it. And I'm going to uh, leave that option available, but it's not going to necessarily be easy. Um, they He doesn't, when you brought in destruction, he doesn't care because he's like, it's part of life and growth. Mm -hmm. You have to have a death to have a life. You have to, sure. everything dies. So he's like, I just, it doesn't bother me to have a destructive phase. If people make it through, they are potentially more evolved. That's, that's the perspective that he has. Go back to that, uh, that viewpoint that was brought up about th these, uh, hierarchical beings kind of look at the weaker ones as like, they're wanting to be controlled. They're wanting to be uh, manipulated. You know, they haven't, when they're ready to be on their own, they're going to make the choice to stand in their sovereignty and then we won't bother them anymore. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, when you look at sort of the hermetic laws and the higher light laws, it's like we, the tree is no different than the seed, right? We're all connected. But the, the these entities, I see that they are like, it. Ha the seed has to evolve by being really held to know it's the tree sort of thing. It's sort of an averted way, like you said. Like, it knows it's the tree because it's just a seed kind of thing, and it has to prove that it can climb that high. Yeah, I, I, I can respect and understand that perspective. Um, the, the other question I had was sort of going back to the idea of that, yes, there's going to be a group of people who choose to... Uh, uh, take the blue pill and go back into the matrix or continue to stay in the matrix. And, uh, and then there's those who are taking the red pill and getting red pilled and going into, uh, you know, discovering new worlds and uh, uh, higher energies to connect with and, and opening those portals. How does it look from the, um, the red pill perspective? Like, how do we, how do the blue people just disappear from earth or are they just going to go into their uh, metaverse farms and, and eat potato chips and get sucked into, um, you know, a dependency on, you know, social credits through <laughs> playing your video game and eating your potato chips. I don't know. However, that's going to real estate by Snoop Dogg's. Uh, yeah. 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 What was it? <laughs> his, his, in, in his, yeah, in the uh, what's it called? Uh, in the in that version of the metaverse, uh, the sandbox, Meta sandbox. He's got the sandbox stuff, but that's decentralized. That actually may there may be some good things in that. Or, but anyways, <laughs> that's a whole other. <laughs> uh, yes. Let me see with that. He says, "Well, the soul has incarnated for this specific lesson and decisions." 
every soul will choose differently. He's actually showing me the two of swords in the tarot. If anyone's familiar, it's like you have the you have different choices at different points. Mm -hmm. um, he says the key for those individuals that are ascending is to potentially get as many others that can respond. Uh, he says it is sort of like opening portals. So the more you are in truth, the more you are willing to talk about it, the more people are opening their own portals of like, hey, maybe I am interested kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, then what happens though? Yeah, I'm just curious how it, how does it, I mean, we will know when we get there, we're doing it right now, but just the view, I'm always like, how is it going to show up in, in our reality, right? It shows up right. in many ways, uh, you know, the, the, going back to the old hybrid children idea, how is it showing up for, for me, it's showing up through, you know, different things, but not in the way I had, <laughs> that I had thought it was going to show up. Right. Yeah, for sure. So as of right now, the timeline that he's showing me based on like right now, all of the collective current energies, what it mm -hmm. looks like is there will continue to be a push to maintain sort of the control and power of what the agenda is like. They may have not totally succeeded with certain things, but they're still going to try to get that metaverse in place. And those that are like, it's not my reality. I'm moving into five dimensional living. He says there will be more communities getting built. Um, there's something with the timeline of it's not ripe to build agriculture to be able to sustain those communities. It's like it's not quite there yet. There's not enough right. agricultural development to be able to sustain large communities. So sure. he's saying more energies need to incarnate of light to be able to grow that. And so it's it's it needs almost like linear time. Like I don't know if it's going to even be in my timeline um, as a person right now, I feel like, you know, like right now we're at where we are just trying to open the portals for those individuals to incarnate, open up the possibilities of different technology that can maybe introduced for agriculture and peaceful living. Mm -hmm. um, and until those start to get built, more and more energies will come. But it's it almost feels like either way, there will be a pull for a different three dimensional Earth. And. I don't know. It's just, it still feels like a struggle. I'm not really sure. 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 And, um, so I guess that gets, gets into like ideas of free energy and stuff. So is it, are we not ready for that energy yet? Are the powers still going to fight over that one? So, or? okay. So that's a huge energy pull. He's showing me things like that is going to be a huge, because what he's showing me is like, when you look at technology, like it's not a bad thing to have these technologies be opened and yeah. what these darker entities are coming in to harness it and the light frequencies are like no we can use that to build earth and mm -hmm. he's like it's it's it is it feels like a war and a divide mm -hmm. i feel like for as of now it feels like there will be a divide of people choosing this and people choosing this and it'll be like we don't really we coexist but we're not in the same world in a way mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it feels like that now. It feels like, you know, you drive down the mountain and you get that. Yeah, I fog. don't know that it will change too much. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that. Some people will just continue to stay in the matrix and go deeper into the matrix, and others will get red pilled. And yeah, it'll, they'll be. Uh, some people like to have their steak. Um, actually, I like I had a steak last night. So uh, <laughs> grass fed, though. Um, is it okay to take some questions from the audience? Sure. I okay. think so. We'll see. All right. Maybe. Let's open it up, guys. Um, uh, it's so cool. I don't really, I haven't really had much of an experience to talk to uh, an integrated Dukunian. So this is very interesting. I know we were thinking about bringing him in in our first interview or bringing a type, that type of energy, and he just didn't show up. And that, I remember at the very end, we were like, oh, I guess the Dracodians didn't want to come through today. No, and I'm actually glad now because I feel like at the time it wasn't quite ready. But he came yeah. through when I first was going through an awakening. He's very big, like with this little, uh, I don't know, maybe a cape thing. Yeah. It's like tied around his thing. And it freaked me out. And I was like, you no. Know. Cool. Well, uh, Glenn, how about uh, you want to talk to a big reptilian? What yeah, I've got, I've got so many questions, but I'll <laughs> keep it. I'll keep it brief. <laughs> So the the way I understand this, Diet, is that the the energy that he's evolved in is about separation and domination. You know, like evolution means you're taking care of yourself by 
kind of exploiting other people. If you have to exploit other people, it's that dog eat dog kind of mentality thing. And he's saying, I've done that. I've evolved as far as I can go. I'm ready to evolve down a different path. So, so the first thing I'm, I'm wondering if, if I'm understanding that correctly, if I articulated that correctly. And then the second part of the question is, does he know what that means? Like what, what would it take for him to evolve down a different path? If he's developed these habits of domination and control, what would it look like to evolve down a different path? And then I'm also curious, what, what can I do like to help him? If, if I'm ever interacting, if I'm ever alone and I'm feeling the presence of some kind of energy like this overcome me, what's the best thing that I can do in that moment that would help a dark energy that wants to evolve down a different path, actually evolve down a different path. Okay. So he's showing me to answer your first question is they were, um, Okay, there's a lot going on with that. Okay, so like us, as a draconic entity, he was able he was able long ago to incarnate on Earth as like a human. Um, their energy is different, but they were able to project as a human figure. And he's showing you that he would have been very similar to like the old Babylonian kings or the old Mesopotamian type of kings. Um, he's showing me that just because they are uh, like what we would refer to as darker entities, they're very evolved. He, we were able to understand human behavior and we studied all cosmic energies to be able to harness our empire in a very uh, low density. So he says it's almost like having a godlike figure fall into a state of mankind and create through that sphere. Um, so, okay, so then he says, as this occurred, um, and as other entities like myself incarnated to develop their own kingdoms and become self-aware through a fallen state, we begin to de-evolve in some cases. We must darken our own energy to exist in the polarity of darkness, which eventually corrupts itself. He says, but the objective to maintain balance and to keep incarnating is to also have a high degree of uh, like light and good, like know that that also exists. So it's very Buddhist and knowing that it exists, but also like knowing like in order to me to keep incarnating, I've got to be a little bit darker. So he's, he's very like, he understands two very extreme polarities is what he's showing me. Um, so now we're looking through, look through that evolution. Let me see if I can answer your second question. So he says to answer that I have been the goods the good of kings, and I've been the most evil of tyrants. I know both sides. I know most must be done. This is why I don't care much about destruction, because I've seen it. I know what comes of it when there is death. New things can be reborn, depending on where vibrations are at that current time. So to speak of evolution in this sense, I would be another creator on another universe that is not quite as low in density where I would be able to encompass more light and love frequencies, which I desire. I want, uh, he says, my people and my creations to be able to expand in creativity, to learn and grow within themselves and not have to be tyrannical upon their animalistic behaviors like I have had to in the past. These are choices that kings must be made. They are very hard to conceptualize. If you are not in that position, you must take the head of your enemy if needed, leaving their children starving. It is uh, the decree of mankind, and this is where I've come from, but it is not necessarily what I desire um, for my kingdom moving forward. I wish for creation and growth and for new learning. So he's, he's showing me that in order to do that, he's got to get off this, this dimensional frequency. What was the wow. other part of your question? Oh. The other part of the question is that if, if I'm, if I'm like alone or I'm doing anything and I start feeling the presence of like some dark energies. Okay. Um, and, and, and I, I, I want to help them fall or something like that. You know, like what, I get what, what you're saying. What, what, what's my reaction? Like, what's the optimal reaction for me whenever I'm interacting with dark energies? It's both in my highest good and their highest good. Mm hmm. Uh, he says, well, we speak to polarity. So if you feel my energy, if you feel a darkened energy, it is most likely because you are in a depressed, anxious, or darkened state. It welcomes the energy, which 
he says it's actually very challenging because if you get into that state um, and you it leaves that energy open, it will challenge you to get out of it. But it's like it could also push you back into depression if you're not if your will isn't strong enough to move forward with those lessons. Um, let me just see if there's anything else with that. He says it's not necessarily the act of an individual that helps me evolve, but a collection of similar frequencies of which I seek to evolve from. So with your act of depression and anxiety, I see an aspect of myself and can also learn if you grow through it. If you choose to, uh, he says, like, submit yourself. He's like, I can't, I can't evolve. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I just really quick. Um, what does he have to say about, say, like, um, retribution or s sort of trials? You know, like the Nuremberg trials. Is, are they? Do they learn from that type of an experience where we can like sit them down and say, "Hey, hey, bad Dillion, you can't uh, do this stuff to humanity because you create these types of emotions and stresses and traumas and." Or do you already know that going in? You know what? <laughs> uh, okay, let me just see what he, let me just get into that energy. Okay, so this goes back to the pyramid. Like, he's showing me that if, if you are a ruler, you make choices based on almost having a little bit of entitlement of being able to rule. And sometimes those lives and the traumatic experiences, he's like, aren't really part of that consequence that we're considering. Um, if people can move through their own traumas, they evolve. He's like, but uh, I'm trying to, th let me just see if he'll give me any other things on that. Any, maybe other stories or allegories to consider. Well, he just is bringing me to the Nuremberg trials. He's like, when you, when you bring that up, we already knew of the consequences. And by that time, you don't care. We don't care. We don't care what it is. It's. I see. Wow. Some harsh lessons there. Hey, <laughs> uh, hey Will, you want to jump in? Sure. Hey, guys. Um, my question is, what can he or they share with us at this time that uh, really excites them or gives them um, optimism that they wish to share with us today. Hmm, that's good. Yeah, very good. Okay, so he's showing me the cosmic stars and the planets a lot. I'm just asking him, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? His, his verbals are hard to understand, but visually he's showing me a lot of these themes of understanding cosmic intelligence, stars and the systems and the galaxies and understanding that it is the human body. Like it is all of us in the body and to know that we truly are divine um, and, and the creators of that. Let me see. Let me see if there's anything else. So he's showing me a lot of um, visuals from, I think, Michelangelo, the like Derovillian man, where like we understand divinity in such a dense form and we can understand like such a cosmic field of it. And he says it really excites us to be able to know what our bodies are capable of. Like it, it's a weird, twisted thing, but like, can you take somebody's life? Are you willing to take somebody's life? Are you willing to cheat on somebody? Like all these things that kind of go through the psyche it, in a body. Are you willing to see these things? And is there duality? And is there also no judgment? Because that's essentially is the source. The source doesn't actually care, but the human uh, to get to reach his divinity, he will create a moral code for himself kind of thing. That's really all that's coming through is like this idea of divinity and, and physicality is like what really excites it. And that's possibly why he wants to also create another world. It's, yeah. So is Elon Musk part of this group? Oh, gosh. I think you <laughs> should actually get a read on energy. Let's see. <laughs> Elon Musk has got... So okay, let me just see what's going on. I I think he does. It's really hard to read. I feel like I'm getting blocked a little bit. Okay. But he feels a little draconic in some way. He feels a little bit like he knows how to do this. Yeah, he wants to go to the stars and uh and uh <laughs> seek out uh you know all that stuff and 
populate the earth with his special seed and uh, all that. Good stuff. Right. Like, well, doesn't he have like 10 kids? It's like, who does that? Unless they're, they're building an empire. I know. New ones are being announced every day. Uh, so, anyways, enough about Elon. Um, Mark, you should hop in there with your question. So, I can see some commonality. And I've played with the the dark energy, I think, a lot and in this lifetime. Um, well, not actively playing with it, but it was in my experience, I believe, because of previous lifetimes. And And I can appreciate the dark energy and I can appreciate the benefit of integrating it. Um, and I've been about integrating it, you know, into love and, and rising above the polarity. Um, on the other hand, I think that it seems like he's potentially still more about controlling people, even if he's taking them to a, to more of a loving, a more divine side, but still doing it out of control. Whereas I'm in the opposite where I'm all about discovering my sovereignty and helping other people discover their own sovereignty. But also, I feel like he's just not in my reality anywhere at all. And I was wondering if, and it seems to me like, like I'm in one playground and he's just in a totally different playground. And I'd be curious about his perspective on that. And if it's mm -hmm. like we just, and although we are kind of meeting right now, which I think is interesting. Um, and I'm curious about what he, how he feels about this. Because I know most of the people on this call are more, well, they're in my playground um, as opposed to, to his playground. So I was curious what he thinks about that. And if like he considers us to be a threat, I don't consider him to be a threat at all. Um, and I'm all about just loving and accepting him. Okay, let's see what he says with that. Um, I'm just going to share a symbol that came through for you, and then I'm going to move forward with uh, some other things. But he's showing me a lot of Catholic symbols. Do, were you, do, was your mother Catholic or your father? Okay. Yes. Um, let me just let me just see what he was. My father wasn't, but now he's he's not Catholic, but he's he was atheist and went Christian. My mom was Catholic and went agnostic. Was she born Catholic and baptized? Yeah, yeah, and she was kind of in an abusive Catholic environment. None, okay. you know, hitting you with rulers and that sort of thing. Okay, so he's showing me specifically with you, Mark, there's a lot of bridging. Like, your soul is really incarnating through... Yeah, like he says, a spiritual indebtedness. I'm asking what that means. And I feel like your ancestors probably were from some currents that were very high spiritual adepts. Um, and then it eventually gets corrupted somehow. There's something with it being decayed, um, old and stagnant. And you've come in to really bridge old stagnant spirituality into the new arts. Um, I'm asked because I'm asking how how are you integrated or how did he match up to being in this energy? Uh, with you and he says that you are very spiritually old as himself like you guys both know a lot of these old spiritual truths it's just that you're on different paths of your bridging you're creating a bridge for the new uh spiritual path to be born while also kind of being a little bit part of that old regime in a way that old program uh let me just see if there's anything else that he he doesn't see you very much different to be honest as far as your soul's development because you, you're you in the middle of the polarity. You're trying to bring in the light and you're trying to understand it and evolve, but you've been through the corruption of it. Um, let me just see if there's anything else he wants to share. Uh, he doesn't want to go there. He want, he's, talk, he's showing me a lot of Buddhist themes. Um, it's a lot for you of balance and moderation and finding your peace with these two things. And he's making me feel like that's what he is also about. Like he's not trying to pick a side. He's trying to create with polarities in himself, 
But the fall of our earth has gotten so dense that it was very hard to create with such a dark current. Like it became so dark in and of itself. Um, and then uh, he's, he just keeps making me feel like when a king, so to speak, drops down, everybody else drops down further. And they're very animalistic and they're very cutthroat. And he says, so there has to be some control into helping them also not kill themselves. You know, there, there's got to be a, some sense of control in a way. Um, that's what he's making me feel like the, the control comes from is helping humanity create a moral code um, and not being able to perceive how that looks. So he's got to do it and also being able to harness uh, the animal nature. Oh, I've got goosebumps when you said that. And I'm feeling a lot more in common with them now, actually, which is interesting. And, and yeah, Buddhism is where I went. Um, not traditional Buddhism so much, but more the Zen, you know, and letting go of the dogma and going for, you know, the, uh, the experiential aspects of it. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good Thank stuff. You. Thanks, Mark. Um, <clears throat> Cynthia. Hey, so, um, we're, we're talking a lot about these, these, um, different concepts of like, you know, power and control and, and how that, um, experience and their reality differs from the one that we're having. But the way that I've been looking at these things with trying to integrate is I've been trying to look at those words that we have, you know, that, that kind of negative attachment to and understand like, okay, so we have that filter. So like, but if you take the word control and, and understand like what it is at its core of like power, what are we doing is stepping into our sovereign power is control, even not just like an external projection of power, like is that, I guess what I'm trying to go at is like, is that a good way to try to understand these constructs outside of the filters that we have and try to look at them from more of that neutral way so we can understand the lessons in what it is they're trying to say without having to have that negative filter over it, you know? Okay, so I guess what I'm hearing you say is like, is it uh, like, when can we not be controlling, you know, is that... No, I guess what I was trying to say is it's it's more about the the construct of the words. Like we look at the word control and as humans, a lot of the times we think of that as being like a negative vibration, mm -hmm. whereas in this, in their experience, they're talking about using it in a positive way. And so like, it, is it just a little bit of that disconnect, even just in language of our understanding of, you know, different levels of vibrations of different words like control can be used in a way that feels very negative and low vibration but then also there is this exact same reflection of where it has a positive light and kind of our journey in bridging those gaps is figuring out those how they're the same I guess even though they feel so far apart to us you know integrating that polarity of of those words that feel scary to us like control and yeah, let me see if there would be more information on that word specifically and how it correlates. Uh, he says, when I speak of bow, um, control, what I also mean in a more lighter sense is like boundaries. And uh, let me just, okay. Let me, hold on one sec. And so he's just showing me like if you were to have, let's just say a farm um, and a gate, you just kind of allow what needs to come in and what needs to come out. And you're very particular on what that looks like so that you don't, let's just say, have too much sheep flooding in or too many sheep going out. Like it's very like what comes in, what comes out, I guess like a cell, right? Like it's got to stay in its equilibrium that's what he says what he means by control and he feels like because they were more godlike in um incarnating they were able to have a higher perspective on what that was going to be for the ecosystem and a lot of the undeveloped humans didn't know what that was they they could get more chaotic or more you know extreme at times and so they were able to say too much too much pull back this we need to do this uh, that's what he's making me feel like is what he means by control is like it is control, but he understands balance. He's not controlling it to the point 
where things are going to de-evolve because so, things are so dark. He knows that like they've got to evolve or they're going to deconstruct. They're going to de-evolve themselves to the point of dissolution. Um, yeah, he's just showing me again like water. Like it's just too much or too little all the time. You just have to keep balance. And it all depends on the frequency of the collective and where we're at as a as a human as a like earthly experience right like you can't get too much out there or it's too much yep uh anybody who's got a garden knows or hydroponics and control of the bh levels <laughs> <laughs> knows what that's all about um one last question from charmaine thank you thanks yeah i hope uh i think cynthia i hope that answered I, I i got some stuff out of that um go ahead charmaine yeah thank you um uh did I had a question uh for about um uh and speaking about like darkness being a means to growth I'm a therapist and a counselor what I'm noticing as a theme these days is suicide suicidality or suicidal ideation and just like a channeler as a counselor I really need to bracket my own beliefs and ideas when I'm working with people but something was just weighing on me so heavy the other day and that was what does happen to souls uh, uh when they've um when they've been overcome by these negative feelings, these negative pieces that are hopefully meant for growth, but what happens to them when um, when they leave? And, and like I said, I was raised in a very religious home, so I grew up hearing stories of what happens to souls, um, and that hasn't been my belief. But the other day, I just I was really overcome by that question: like, what, what happens to people? There's a lot of fear, a lot of pain happening for people these days. Um, and that desire to leave. Yeah, I'll channel and see more. I know that based on other channelings I've done, every it's it's interesting because every soul is different. Like where they did it, how they did it, what mental state were they in when they took their lives. Some of them actually get stuck uh, because they see the grief of their family and they they want to make it right still here in this sort of fractal spiritual sense. That's why you get a lot of earthbound spirits that like don't really know where to go. They're kind of like stuck in this. This is my family and I took my life. I caused all this trauma. And then you get those that actually were able to sort of integrate back in and come and help. So it's so different depending on all those factors, you know, like the conscious and mental state of that individual and what are they working on? And what is their soul evolved through? Let me see if I can get even more with this particular entity. Uh, okay, so this is the darker side of things. Uh, just take it what you will. It's very cultish. It's very occultish. But he's saying that there, there is a lot that are mentally just not able to understand the chaos that is breaking up through the psyche of Earth and the collective. And so there is. If people can't make it through, if they don't have a good therapist like yourself to help them realize the truth of life in their ways, they will feel harvested in a way. They will feel like life is needs to be sacrificed so something else can come out of it. Something else can can be born. It's it's an old uh, sac sac self sacrifice. You know, I'm not worth this. I'm sacrificing myself, and maybe something else can happen because of it. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. So it, it all depends on the soul and what they're willing to to learn and grow through. He is making me feel like, unfortunately, and this is the darker side of looking at it, like if they can't see the light of life, like there is purpose to my life, then their soul will kind of get pulled. It feels like it gets sucked out. And um, it's just part of sort of that self-sacrifice like i'm i'm committing suicide so to speak for the tribe um there's a lot of these in old tribal things where they picked somebody to sacrifice the sins of the tribe and that's sort of what it feels like is like i can't evolve i can't change so i'm gonna i just have to die um so yeah there's a lot of that mental processing for you as a therapist to be able to get them to know that they are significant and contribute in some way to community and what about consequences? Is there any consequences to a soul leaving that way? Uh, so let me just see, because it usually depends on the soul. The consequences. 
he says the most grand consequence in his eyes is that they just have to reincarnate and redo. They just redo and they don't learn through being here still. They don't forgive or let go when they're still here. They just recycle back kind of thing, he says, and they just have to learn it again. And he and it's unfortunate because I've done readings too where people get suicidal life after life because they can't break through that loop. So you, you mentioned thank you. you yeah, thanks, Charmaine. Um you you mentioned um a a sense of purpose or giving them uh um some sort of um yeah, something to do, right? To to create, to to is that is that the key to open to breaking the curse in a sense or the breaking the cycle? Is that yeah? I mean, a, a lot of some of these like deeper psyche stuff goes back to when we were tribal people, and one of the images that he was showing me is like we were so tribal and community based, so hive mind that we all had a purpose. And now when everything gets fractaled off and we don't feel like we have something for to contribute, it feels like we shouldn't be here. Like we shouldn't be part of this tribe because nobody's accepting us. And so he's showing me that in the tribal communities, there was a sacrifice and they were willing to sacrifice at times to create better crops for the community, so to speak, right? right? Like I'm sacrificing myself to the gods so the whole community can have a better crop next year. It was a purpose. It was an intention. And that kind of gets embedded in our deep psyche and a spiritual sense. So when someone's like, I'm suicidal, it means that they don't feel like they are contributing and feel connected to their, their tribe and their people and their lives. And they're hoping that through that sacrifice that there's an outcome of the tribe feeling like they've uh, maybe been able to succeed in something and, and they don't feel like they're going to be part of that anymore. Is that a trick that uh, some of these uh, upper echelon Jacorian energies uh, trick the, the individual to believing that? Because it seems like that's not truth, right? It seems that everybody has the potential to create and, and, and contribute. For sure. Yeah. So there's two components to that. There is the side where there is demonic energy that like sacrifice. They they are part of the, that current of death. Um, mm -hmm. And that is something that they feed off of. And then there's also that part of before we were all Christianized, we were part of old cults that really gave a lot of energy to crops and sacrifice. And some of that even went too far as human sacrifice. And so some of us may mm -hmm. still hold that this sacrifice will help or this sacrifice is necessary or I don't, you know, like whatever it is. So it just depends on the psyche of the person and kind of where their travels are and what they're doing. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's that energy is still so rampant here on the planet as far as this, this idea of sacrifice that we must sacrifice uh, aspects of ourselves, the guilt, the shame, right? All of that yeah. stuff. It's all tied into the same weird energy <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. they don't take their lives but they sacrifice their life for other people to exist in some way it right exists. it makes no sense but i guess people still buy into those stories um but anyways i mean that's a whole other we could go another two hours on that just alone um so uh i want to end the call but uh first yet how do people reach out to you i uh, i realized i had your old website on my website i'm getting that updated uh, your website's uh, re Reincarnated Mystic. Was that it? No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Reincarnated Mystic. And yep. you can email me reincarnatedmystic at gmail.com. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And are you, are you, you're, are you actively doing sessions and things or? I'm actively How's... doing it. I'm going to yeah. see, I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if people wanted to get in touch with you, they can go to the website and book a yeah. session. If they... Okay. Cool. 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 Boy, just want to make sure that's, Option yes, is open. I would love to. Sweet, sweet. Uh, anything else you want to share before we uh, say goodbye on the call? Um, no, I hope I didn't get too dark. I do find that at times darker energies comes through if we need to understand maybe something. And so maybe that just needed to come through for some clarity on what's happening. And Absolutely. No, I thank you so much for for going there and going to some uncomfortable places perhaps <laughs> for people because uh because it i mean the the truth is as as our integrated jacronian buddy uh said there are 
a lot of lessons to be learned in being in these uncomfortable places. And uh, I absolutely, you know, believe that and know that we're experiencing that now as a collective and individuals and collectives. So very uh, educational and very um, eye-opening. And I still have more questions for next time. We'll have to do this again. Uh, so thank you so much for just coming on and sharing. I, I'm just based on the comments, a lot of people are getting a lot out of it. So it's a, a much needed dark lesson. <laughs> so, but it, it didn't feel dark at all. I felt very, uh, very empowered from this knowledge. So thanks again, Diet, for coming in. And we'll uh, definitely have to do this again sooner than later. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Bye bye. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you like this interview. We actually do this every week on my membership portal page. And you can access it through interviewwithed.org or uh, click on the link uh, somewhere in here. I'll put a link and uh, come over and join us. You too can ask questions. Every week we have new special guests and you get to ask questions directly to the channelers and to the beans that they channel. So see you in the portal.